Good morning, everyone. Wrap a ride. And, uh, talking a bit on this ride. There's a lot of men I'm finding that are insecure of their manhood, their sexuality. Honestly, I mean, really, that's basically what it is. You're secure, it doesn't and it isn't going to bother you as to you, you don't have to prove your manhood, you don't have to dress a certain way, you don't have to do quote unquote manly things. You got to understand, that's just not not part and parcel of it. Um, <laughs> this image that society creates for this so called. Manliness, oh, he's a manly man. It's like, you know, I, I've never had anybody really question, especially not in my adulthood. When at certain ages of teen and whatnot, I didn't do the the typical boyish things, the typical manly things. Uh, yeah, I was I was bullied some, gay, queer, whatever, and um, simply because I chose to pay more attention to my clothes than my car, <laughs> or uh, I didn't play football, didn't care anything for sports, uh, why are these kids late for their bus this morning, so anyway, which that's fine, um, I, I wonder about people that's, that obsess over such things, that it just bothers them how other, you know, so what? What is the concern? And there's so much going on in the world today. So much going on. Um, you might find it awkward that a man would whatever, but it's, 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 it's like, really? Is this, is this what we should be concerned about? We've got all these issues. If you're concerned about kids, you're looking in the wrong direction. Christian church, and I have been on this for, for very loudly for at least two decades. For two decades? Long time. <laughs> I've been running a website about this. I've now published a book about it. I've done a mini documentary about it. I've done all this stuff out there. And um, trying to draw attention to this, nobody wants to talk about it. They want to talk about something that's not hurting any kids. It's only puts them in an uncomfortable position to have to question certain manliness or, or you know, whatever. But the kids are getting hurt. The kids are getting hurt bad. They're getting hurt in Christian churches. And unfortunately, nobody wants to address that. Nobody wants to deal with it. Nobody wants to talk about it. And though all I'm doing is bringing the message, I'm put down simply for bringing the message. I'm not encouraging cross dressers, but I'm also not bashing them or showing any concern about it. That's not where the harm is for these kids. And it's very troubling. It is very troubling because it is an epidemic coming out of Christmas. Churches are only second in our nation producing child molesters. I'm talking about the pastors. I'm not talking about the congregants. I'm literally talking about the ones in the pulpit preaching, preaching the word, praying, the youth pastors, the senior pastors. All you got to do is go to your search engine. You don't have to take my word for it. You can easily find these cases that are there in, in horrible numbers and have been for decades and decades and decades. Nobody wants to talk about it. They want to concern themselves about same-sex marriage. They want to concern themselves about cross dressers and drag queens. That's been around forever. But nobody wants to talk about what's produced in Christendom itself when it comes to these child molesters. Go to your search engine. Type in two simple words: pastor charge. Every week, new case after new case, and that, my friends, is just the ones that get caught. I'm just talking about simply the ones that got caught. 
keep that in mind. I'm not talking about the ones that don't get caught. And if you know anything about um, sexual molestation of kids or adults of women, the majority don't get reported. Because the way they're groomed by these pastors and the way men groom women or whatever to abuse them, they're made, the victim is made to feel guilty. It's, it's their fault. I've seen it in the churches all my life. My dad was a pastor. I was on the pulpit when I was six, seven years old. It was my, it was my path in life who carried the keys to the church. And they groomed his kids. And the kids were like, well, you know, the, the, the man couldn't help himself because the way the kid, whatever, you know. And, it, you know, and so the kids... And it's a shameful thing, the way we present sex, the way we un we don't educate our kids. When it comes to this kind of thing, the kids are immediately, they feel shame, they feel guilty, it destroys their freaking lives. It really, really does. Nobody wants to talk about this. Nobody wants to talk about it. But if you'd like one of my books, it's called um, How to Christen Them with Love. The Leg on a Dance and Pray, P R E Y I N G. And I'll be glad to get your copy. You can uh, message me here. You can go to Amazon, look up Dr. Kelsey Graham, and find the book. You can, um, all the above. It's there. I'll be glad to send you a copy. I'll be glad to autograph a copy. I'll be glad to come and speak to your group about this subject. I'll be glad to come to your church and enlighten them as to where the kids are getting hurt and why they're getting hurt. And this is the shame of it. So I'm using my motorcycle ride this morning to con convey some message. We're back under three dollars a gallon again this morning. Two ninety nine point nine one point below three. That's just the way it rolls. But there, my friends, is the issue. Not the cross dressers. Not the same sex marriages. Things are presented in such a horrible way. It just makes no sense at all because people do, they're not trained to think we don't teach people to think we don't want people to think I'm mad if you're told what to be concerned about on and on it goes so there you go there's my little lecture now I'm going to enjoy the rest of my ride get a little breakfast i got to pick up some uh, paper for my printer at the Wally World and enjoy this little hippie ride yes I've got on my leathers this morning because it's more chilly Overcast. It was a little crispy when I first started out. And tomorrow it's supposed to be a real rainy day, so I, I wanted to get this dried today. I did not get the dried yesterday. And every day I can, I like to get on my bike. The more I ride my bike, the more comfortable I get in handling the bike. I don't care how many years, you can always, you know, it's just, it's just the more you do it, you're paying attention to what you do. Um, you should get better and better and better whatever you do, whether you're running, whether you're jumping, whether it's dancing. <laughs> There's always room for improvement, right? So there you go. No sunshine this morning. I got my sunglass, sunglass goggles in the trunk here. And uh, I'll tell you a little ride. Well, I'll tell you what, this leather, I found this jacket. This is a cockpit jacket. I didn't realize how expensive these things were. This thing is in premium condition. I found it in the whole shop. And uh, I bought it. I gave $150 for it. Got home and I looked it up. I went to the website of the manufacturer that makes these wonderful jackets. And this jacket is a $700 jacket. Uh, I'm glad I didn't hesitate. I didn't, I didn't really want to spend $150 and I thought, I tried it on, and you know, it looks good on you, and you know, it's like, well, I like it. I like the way it looks. I like the way it fits. So here you go. And it's warm. It's nice for a bike ride. It's the perfect weather. So I still might get it here. We've been in Charlie before the rest of the but that is cool. I don't even know if you can hear me over this wind. Well, I think the windshield blocks where the camera is, and I need to invest in a... Uh, I'm going to have to my little cameras. I can do better with my audio. I 
got my, I might look at that today. Or I've got my annual wellness check. And I tell people all the time, the older I get, the less I care. Because no matter what I do, uh, I'm not going to prevent the end of my life. I can only uh, postpone it for a few minutes and it's still going to come. Believe me, you're talking, you're listening to a man that has lost his entire family. So clearly I know that no matter how many doctors and visits and whatnot, sure, when I was younger and had a hope of decades and decades ahead of me, uh, I still didn't, I still wasn't ever paying for doctors. I went for, uh, uh, 40s, 50s, I guess, to most of my 50s, up into my mid-60s. I had no health insurance for 15 years. I would say 50s to, uh, well, late 40s to uh, maybe 65, I guess, when I finally got old Medicare. And I, you know, I used it for my teeth, glasses, and uh, another than that, it's a wellness check. Most issues I've had in my life, health-wise, has been uh, allergies. The biggest thing I did that I argued like a lot of smokers do, I quit smoking and my allergy, my sinus issues improved dramatically. That was a good thing. Actually, sinuses were destroyed my teeth. So anyway, the biggest thing I did there was I quit smoking. Yeah, as I'm rolling along here, yelling into the wind, I don't know if anybody hears me or not. <laughs> oh, this overcast time is still got 15 minutes. I don't know what time Walmart opened up. Let's see if I can go there first. I reckon. I got <laughs> the busiest weekend. I got the next couple of months. It'll be June the 23rd, 24th, 25th. Three weddings in a row. Who would have thought, huh? Who would have freaking thought? Let's go for a ride, folks. I think I'm going to, for the fun of it, take the long way around. Because I want to. Especially on this. And the gold wing is not as uh, critical because the gold wing has so many fairings and so much protection. You don't feel the wind. You don't feel uh, you're just protected as you go down the road at 67 miles an hour. It's a whole different ride than, than this little scooter. But my gold wing is getting its tune up. Uh, and I don't do it myself. I take it to a shop down in Clanton and gladly pay them for the headache of changing a back tire and doing, getting their hands dirty. 
And uh, so I guess it probably got more than one bike. So I, guess I got one more than one car, a single. And uh, transportation is kind of a critical thing in our lives and our culture and where we live and blah, blah, blah. So I make sure that uh, if something breaks down, I got another one. And it's cheaper for me to do that. These people that say, I'm just going to buy a new car. I don't want those monthly payments personally. I do not at all. Where is that microphone? I don't know. I'm not this morning and I thought yeah I'm gonna turn around I got time and uh, visit this cemetery that I visited before a little walk through here this is right off of um, well I trust it through the gate is is open it's easy to access nothing says no trespassing so, take a stroll. It's not that big at all. 1900 to 1971. 1905 to 1957. They were, I was uh, going on three years of age when they died. So they existed in my lifetime. We shared this planet together. It's 1918. 18. What is that? 23. Yeah, there's some older ones here. But, uh, it's a dead tree, I think. You hear that? Is that a crow? background, see what that is? 
Yeah, this little gem of a cemetery is no no way. I mean, you've got to if you whiz by there, you'd miss this a hundred times over. Margie Littleton. I knew some Littletons. Uh, October 16th to November 11th did not live a month. Did not live a month. That's Charlie Littletons. My dad had friends in the Birmingham area by the last name of Littleton. And then we have the Clarks. They're the uh, late 1800s into the early 20th century. If I remember correctly, there's one up here that the guy's buried with both his wives. And I'm trying to think where it was. Listen to that. Listen to that. You hear that? I'm trying to see. I see him somewhere fly. He's up there. He's up there. You see him? There he goes. There he goes. That way. Saying a good morning here. He just went to another tree branch. Audrey's uh, 1867 to 1915. And uh, although he sleeps, his memory doth live. And see, back in the uh, 19, the 19th century and early 20th century, they would label it that way, asleep in death. Wife of Aldridge, she died. And see, see, there's one wife of Aldridge, his, and then I'm trying to remember this one over here. I think this was another, but I can't see it. Yeah. They used to spend it a lot on... Uh, There are tombstones back in the day. We've gotten very boring with that now. There's another Aldridge. Parry? Parry? Aldridge. 1945. We've got Robert. Somebody has recently... Well, I guess this one must have recently died because it looks freshly dug. Semi, but the marker's not been updated Edwin Edmund Wells if that's true outlived Barbara by gosh 10 30 years all time but it looks freshly dug and the marker of the uh, Edmund has not been updated if indeed he passed but that certainly looks like his remains are probably there These are interesting right here. I don't know what the difference is in that stone, but look at that. Mary E. Lindsay, daughter. Born in 1861. Died in 1880. 19 years, one month, and 22 days down to the day. Didn't quite make it to 20 years of age. It's been some time since I've been here. And there are, of course, people that are uh, coming out here because there are some, some kind of a fresh uh, arrangements. Of course, these are, these are not real, but they're still, they're not weathered at all. Some family or whatever, the lions, and... I guess the markers are here. Is it Doc Bailey Lions? It's 20 and 40, going to be 60, 58 years of age. And that's one of the lions. I don't see a marker for a spouse there. interesting etching on that tombstone there. So, this doesn't go back much further. 
fence is right back there. I just thought I'd do a quick walk. And that, I'm being very much entertained by this guy right here. Okay, I know he's right there. There he is. Let's see if I can tune into him here. He is, he is watching me. No pun intended. Like a hawk. <laughs> there he goes. There you go. Oh, I can't keep up with him. Oh well. Maybe I maybe I spooked him away. Private Jasper Holcomb. Forty six to twenty six. I mean, yeah, May 1846, 60, 80, 80 years. 80 years and five days, looks like. A lot of Bailey's here. That one's getting eaten up by the tree. Now he's moved over there, and he's just relentless. I don't think he likes my company. It's got to be it. Here's one they just poured. Uh, oh, here we go. This is the one, I think. Maybe. But there is uh, Carolyn, wife of Urban Bailey. And then, <laughs> the interesting thing, she died in 1879. And it doesn't tell when this one, they got married, but then Jane Bailey was the second wife of Urban. If, if she died in 1879, look at this. Jane... Was that 1836, 1825? Okay, Jane was younger by a few years. That's what I'm looking at. She made it to 1919. And I forget where uh, Mr. Bailey, because there's two wives, and uh, there's one that's been knocked down. Kind of watching back my motorcycle over there. That bird is relentless but anyway I don't even remember the name of this uh, cemetery and I haven't done any what they call EVP work or that sort of thing out here but I find it interesting it's secluded um, I would say most people that drive by here don't even recognize that it's here it is just totally off the road and hidden it's fenced in nicely, and it, it's kind of, it's maintained, it's not all grown up. Look at on, this could use a, a clean up. <laughs> There's uh, moss growing on there. There's some of these riffraff a bit here. But, anyway, yeah, this is interesting. What in the world? <laughs> okay, folks. Mary Anita Holcomb Collins. U.S. Army, Korean War, died in 2004.
I'm trying to remember my terms. I've only been this way a couple of times. I gotta keep it until I learn it. Because I like this path. Not to be called a quarter stack. Alright. Oh, trash. 